Imagine building a warship so sleek, so fast, and so tough. It could sail across oceans and up rivers, all without a single screw gun or power saw. Now picture doing it in the middle of the 9th century with just an axe and some serious Viking swagger. Yeah. Welcome to the world of longship builders. Let's talk about something that sounds like a minor design choice, but was actually a total game changer, the clinker technique. Doesn't sound sexy, I know. But this one clever move is what made Viking longships the stuff of legend. Imagine building a ship the way you'd lay a fish scales, only upside down, that's clinker construction. Viking builders didn't start with a skeleton or an inner frame like most shipbuilders. Nope, they built from the outside in. They began with the outer shell, one long curved plank at a time, overlapping each one slightly over the last and fastening them with hand-forged iron rivets. It was like sewing the skin before shaping the body. And these weren't just decorative choices. That overlapping design created natural strength and flexibility. The whole ship could bend and breathe with the waves instead of stiffening up and breaking apart. It's like the difference between a stiff board and a willow branch. You want to glide, not snap. Now here's where it gets spicy. This method was the complete opposite of what the Romans were doing. Roman ships used something called carval construction, which basically meant building the frame first, the skeleton, and then attaching flat planks on top like skin. Nice and tidy. The Vikings took that rule book and threw it straight into the fjord. They went the other way around, built the skin first, then added the bones later. So why did that matter? Because in clinker-built ships, every plank added strength to the next. The overlaps acted like built-in reinforcement beams, meaning stress was distributed across the entire hull instead of one weak point taking all the impact. That made the ships lighter, faster, and incredibly seaworthy. They didn't crash through the waves, they danced with them. It's also why these ships earned names like Sea Serpent or Wave Rider. They moved with this eerie, animal-like grace. You'd see one sliding through fog or tearing up a riverbank and think, is that thing alive? And honestly, the way they glided through rough seas, it kind of felt like they were. Let's talk about the Viking version of a Swiss army knife, the axe. And not just one kind, we're talking a whole arsenal of specialized blades that turned chunks of forest into ocean-hardened ships. Now this part's going to bend your brain a little. Viking shipbuilders could build an entire longship using just axes. That's it. No power drills, no table saws, just pure muscle, technique, and razor-sharp blades passed down through generations. But don't picture some burly guy swinging a generic chopping axe around. These tools were like surgical instruments. They had big, heavy shaping axes, around two kilograms, perfect for the rough stuff, like carving out the keel or trimming down massive timbers. Then they switched to lighter one kilogram trimming axes when things got delicate, like shaping the edges or smoothing out the planks. Some axes were built for felling trees, others for splitting logs, and a few were so precise they worked like modern wood planers. One of the wildest discoveries came from the Oseberg ship excavation, where they found axes with 71 centimeter wooden handles, tools so well balanced and efficient you could practically use them today without changing a thing. But here's the part that really shows how smart these guys were. They refused to use saws, not because they didn't know how to make them, they did. They just knew something modern builders sometimes forget. Saws cut across the grain, and that weakens the wood. Instead, they relied on a technique called cleaving or riving. It sounds fancy, but it's basically controlled splitting. They'd follow the tree's natural grain using axes and wooden wedges, working with the wood instead of against it. The result? Planks that were not only stronger, but also more flexible, giving the finished ship that perfect combo of strength and agility. It's craftsmanship on a level that makes modern power tools look kind of clumsy. Let's get one thing straight. Viking shipbuilders weren't just good with wood, they were in tune with it. These guys were wood whisperers, no exaggeration. They didn't just see a tree, they saw potential. They saw curves, strength, stress points, and knew exactly how to bring out the best in every log they touched. Their wood of choice, oak. Specifically, Southern Scandinavian oak, prized for its unmatched strength and natural flexibility. When oak was scarce, they'd pivot to pine, ash, or birch. But let's be honest, oak was the gold standard. It was to Viking ships what vibranium is to Wakandan tech, and picking the right tree. That was an art form. Master builders would spend hours in the forest, reading the grain like ancient scrolls, scanning for the perfect natural curves to match a hull or a frame. It wasn't just about chopping something down, it was about choosing the right part of the tree for the right part of the ship. Straight trunks became planks, Curved branches turned into ribs, and the densest parts made the keel, the ship's backbone. 
Now brace yourself, because this part is wild. These guys could look at a standing oak tree and know, with scary accuracy, how many ship planks it would produce, and where every single piece would go on the final vessel. They even knew how the wood would behave depending on where they split it. If the log had a big size difference between top and bottom, they'd split it from the top. If it was riddled with knots, they'd go at it from the side to work around the imperfections without wasting good timber. That's not just skill, that's deep instinctive mastery. But the magic didn't stop at wood. Viking shipbuilding also had a secret source, tar, and this wasn't a dab here, dab there situation. They needed the stuff by the barrel, and so they built what archaeologists now call forest factories, basically the world's first industrial tar production systems. And we're not talking small batches. A single Viking tar pit could crank out 50 to 80 gallons in one go, which is good because just one longship needed about 132 gallons of tar, 630 cubic feet of wood, and roughly 1,600 hours of hands-on labor. So yeah, every drop mattered. Tar wasn't just to keep water out. It was essential for sealing planks, treating rigging, and even coating woolen sails to make them more durable and weather resistant. And their method, brilliantly simple. Instead of piping it out like later European setups, they used a funnel-shaped pit, let the tar drip down into a container, and then dug it all out once the process was done. It was gritty, messy, and shockingly efficient for mass production. So while most medieval societies were figuring out how to patch a roof, the Vikings were out here running pre-industrial tar operations and building seaworthy weapons of war using trees, fire, and a ridiculous level of skill. All right, time to talk about something most people completely overlook when picturing Viking ships. The sails. You'd think they were made of linen or canvas, right? Something lightweight and breezy. Wrong. Viking sails were often made from wool. Yeah, actual sheep wool. Now that might sound crazy at first. Wool is thick, it's warm, it breathes. So wouldn't the wind just slip right through? Not the way the Vikings did it. These weren't just fuzzy blankets tied to a mast. They treated the wool with a potent mix of horse fat and ochre, making it nearly windproof. What they ended up with was tough, flexible, and perfectly suited for the brutal weather out on the North Atlantic. Creating one sail took the wool of around 200 Norwegian Spelsauer sheep, a hardy breed that literally descended from wild sheep in Norway. The sail on the replica of Skuldelev 1, it weighed 90 kilograms when dry and took 7,850 hours to weave. That's about four and a half years of full-time labor for one sail. And if that wasn't enough, they didn't stop at wool. The Vikings also experimented with linen sails made from flax. But flax is high maintenance. Processing it meant pulling plants by hand, soaking them in water for weeks, snapping open the stalks, and then combing out the fibers using sharp iron tools. It was a backbreaking process before they even started weaving. Still, they mastered it. Choosing wool or linen based on the type of voyage, the weather, and even the intended speed of the ship. Now, as much as the axe was the star of the Viking toolbox, it wasn't doing all the work alone. These shipbuilders had an entire lineup of specialized tools, and they used them like pros. Take the finds at Mastermere, for example. Archaeologists uncovered bow drills with spoon bits, perfect for punching precise rivet holes without splintering the wood. They had corking scrapers to carve out the grooves where they'd later stuff tarred rope, sealing the hull tight. Then there were smoothing planes to make the surfaces glide through water, not drag against it. They didn't just whack things together either. When it came to fastening the planks, they used a two-hammer system, a heavy 1.5 kilogram hammer as an anvil, and a lighter one, around 500 to 600 grams, to drive the rivets home. It was a tag team operation that let them work fast and accurate. They even had giant wooden clamps, some up to 80 centimeters long, to hold the ship together plank by plank as they assembled it. Think of it like a massive wooden hug, keeping everything perfectly in place while the nails went in. But here's the part that really shows their genius. The Vikings had access to adzes, those curved blade tools great for hollowing and shaping. But when researchers studied the Skuldelev ships, they noticed something weird, almost no adz marks, which means they didn't need them. They had refined their axe techniques so precisely they could do the same level of finishing work without ever switching tools. That's not just efficient, that's elite level craftsmanship. Now here's the part that truly blows the mind. Viking shipbuilders didn't use blueprints, no scrolls, no technical drawings, not even carved out diagrams on stone. Everything was done by eye, guided by memory, instinct and tradition, passed down like sacred knowledge. 
Imagine standing in front of a 20-meter hull with no measurements in hand. Just a gut feeling and a lifetime of experience. These master builders knew exactly how much curve to add, how deep to make the keel, and how to balance the hull so it wouldn't tip or drag. It wasn't guesswork, it was ancestral engineering. And modern science got a wake-up call when the replica of the Oseberg ship, called Dronningen, sank during its first sea trial, everyone thought maybe the original Viking design had a flaw. But nope, the problem was with our interpretation, not theirs. We got it wrong, so researchers went back, used laser scanning and photo mapping, and what they found was jaw-dropping. Vikings had an intuitive grasp of complex principles like center of gravity, hydrodynamics, and structural balance, without ever cracking a physics book. But these ships weren't built in isolation. Viking shipbuilding was a full-blown team effort. Think of it like an ancient startup, with dozens of people working across departments. Boat builders, blacksmiths, tar makers, textile workers, rope makers, and more, all hustling toward one goal. Modern reconstructions like the Sea Stallion took 15 to 20 experts working 27,000 man-hours over four years. The original builders probably did it faster and better, and let's not overlook the unsung heroes. Women played a massive role, especially in making sails. Weaving one sail could take years, and multiple women would work together for what became one of the most valuable parts of the ship. Without those sails, all the tar and timber in the world meant nothing. Now, what really made Viking ships extraordinary wasn't any single invention. It was the way they wove all these innovations together. Clinker planking, grain-following woodwork, natural hydrodynamics, and material-specific sail choices into one perfectly balanced system. They weren't just building boats, they were building vessels that could outmaneuver enemies, survive brutal weather, and carry their people across entire oceans. Even centuries later, their influence is still floating in our harbors. Clinker construction techniques lasted well into the medieval era, and the principles Viking builders mastered, like flexibility, strength, and shell-first design, are still echoed in modern naval architecture. So the next time you spot a sleek yacht or see a cargo ship slicing through the sea, remember the Vikings. They did it first. They did it with no electricity, no engines, no schematics. Just axes, iron, and knowledge passed from one generation to the next. Their blueprints weren't drawn. They were felt, shared, and embedded into every calloused hand swinging an axe by firelight. Enjoyed the journey back in time, Smash that like button, drop a comment if Viking engineering blew your mind, and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next story that rewrites what we thought we knew about history.